Some may still deny the overwhelming judgment of science, but none can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. The path towards sustainable energy sources will be long and sometimes difficult. But America cannot resist this transition. We must lead it. There he is. That's President Obama at his inauguration talking about global warming again. Now, it's something he skipped over in his entire election, re-election campaign. Joining me now from Washington to help read the tea leaves is our friend Mark Morano, the boss of ClimateDepot.com. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Ezra. Happy to be here. You know, it's so funny. I remember during the debate with Mitt Romney where President Obama said, oh, I love coal. I love, I love coal so much I'm going to take some coal and oil and rub it on my body for you all to see. Please vote for me in coal country. Well, now that the election is over, well, he's talking about global warming again, something he did not do in the campaign. Should people who work in coal, in oil, in gas, should they be worried? I think they should be worried. I mean, he's talked more about global warming in his inaugural speech than he did the entire campaign. In fact, the entire like, last two years, you could argue. Uh, and what this has done, this has emboldened everyone from Greenpeace to all environmentalists across the spectrum are giddy. And they're all signaling this as Obama is now serious. He also brought God into the global warming debate, essentially saying that this was creation care and that those who care about the earth, God's creation that we have to uh, protect it. So he's trying to bring in religious, uh, the religious element into this. He's pulling out all the stops. Now, he might just be doing this to appease the environmentalists. We'll wait and see what kind of actions he takes. But his example that he said that, concern, that skeptics deny, uh, again, the implication that we're deniers, the more powerful storms. What more powerful storms? We're having a, a hurricane drought. Big tornadoes are down dramatically from the 50s. There's no trend in droughts. Uh, there's no trend in floods. Uh, it's, a, it's a myth. And we're not denying reality. We're denying their fictional uh, version of reality. Yeah, you know, he was saying droughts. I'm thinking there really hasn't been a drought. When he said hurricanes, you know, Hurricane Sandy didn't actually ever become a hurricane, it, it, let alone Category 2, 3, 4. It was a tropical storm. It, it wasn't, the winds weren't going fast enough to be a hurricane. I, I, I wonder how serious he is. Now, let me tell you that just today, if, uh, if I'm, I'm reading the headlines right, uh, the governor of the state of Nebraska, David Heineman, signed his approval saying, we love the new route uh, for the Keystone XL pipeline. It was Nebraska that was the alleged holdup for the U.S. State Department to approve yes. This pipeline. So now that Nebraska is saying, yeah, we're cool, both Democrats and Republicans in Nebraska say, yeah, we're ready. Do you think, uh, what do you think Obama's going to do in response? He can't use it. Nebraska as an excuse well, this anymore. No, he can't. And he had used Nebraska as the holdup. First of all, many environmentalists uh, in the Washington Post and, and other writers are saying his speech yesterday dooms Keystone because now if he's making global warming a priority, there's no way you could have the Keystone pipeline. Remember, ja NASA's James Hansen has been arrested two or three times protesting this Keystone pipeline, essentially saying the Earth's atmosphere can't handle it. So President Obama is going to be under intense pressure now that he's reactivated global warming in his speech. And now that the, the, this Governor Heineman in Nebraska has done this on its way, the pipeline approved it on its, for the pipeline on its way to Texas, this is going to be huge pressure. Obama is going to have a make or break. Uh, it, it, this is going to bring $418 million of benefits to Nebraska, they're claiming, 4,500 jobs. Uh, this is something that's win-win for everyone. The only objection is if you are sitting around scared in your closet in the dark, worried that the Keystone Pipeline is going to be the tipping point to scary and, and dangerous catastrophic global warming. And Obama is appealing to the people who believe that, which means he's giving them a lot of power to influence his administration. And so right now, his EPA administrator, Lisa Jackson, is said to be leaving over her protesting any possible approval of the Keystone Pipeline. Yeah, it's strange. But we're to looking me. at the next few months will be critical. I find it strange that he would give uh, hope to the extremist environmentalists if he didn't uh, plan to satisfy that hope. Last question. Look, Obama is in his final exactly. term, and so he uh, he's unshackled. He doesn't have to be reelected. He can do what he deeply wants to do. And we know that he's always been anti-coal, anti-oil. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, in 2014, a lot of Democrats are up for re-election, obviously all the congressmen, and a lot of senators in states that don't want to go down with the global warming 
um, uh, fear-mongering ship. I mean, I remember, uh, for example, Joe Manchin, um, a Democrat senator who was elected yeah. uh, against cap and trade. So let me ask you this practical political question. You used to work in the U.S. Senate, Mark. Do you think that there are yes. enough U.S. senators on the Democratic side of the aisle who are willing to go off the cliff with Barack Obama? He may not be up for re-election, but they are. Will they part ways with him over some crazy climate bill? Uh, I, it's a very good question. I don't think he's going to get much support for any kind of cap and trade bill or even, frankly, a carbon tax if it came up. But if you look at what Senator Barbara Boxer announced just today, that the White House has all the tools it needs to fight global warming. And they're looking at the EPA. They're looking at new coal standards. They're looking at going after fracking. They're looking at more restrictions on oil drilling. Uh, all kinds of measures they can take to lock down carbon-based energy in the U.S., which, of course, doesn't mean we're going to be saving energy or preventing emissions. It just means we're going to be importing more of our energy from areas that have less than stellar human rights records. But Barbara Boxer herself, the chairwoman of the Environment and Public Works Committee, announced today that the White House doesn't need Congress to do anything about mm. global warming. And so that is frightening, because we're talking about an unelected bureaucracy taking over this issue. That is frightening. Mark Morano, thanks for uh, joining us as you do every week.